Hi, I'm Michael Yardney, and I was interested to read the latest Merrill Lynch Capgemini report, which showed that there's about 15 new millionaires created in Australia every day, and many of them on the back of their property holdings. However, at the same time, a large number of property investors just haven't achieved the success they wanted. Now, of course, this isn't anything really surprising. This is the pattern of success that I've seen over the years. But what does concern me more is a worrying trend where some investors are so keen to do something, in fact, so keen to do anything, that they're heading for property investment disaster. I've, I've come across many potential investors who feel they've missed out on the property boom that occurred over the last year or two. And they just seem they want to catch up. Others feel they're being priced out of the market. They're desperate to get a foothold in the rising property market. And there are those that find they're unable to obtain more finance. They seem willing to try almost anything to participate in the current property boom. To me, many of these potential investors are heading down a path of certain property losses. So today I'd like to share with you what I consider three surefire ways to lose money in property and one way to ensure you invest successfully. But before I do, I want to remind you that this session is being brought to you by my Real World Real Estate Workshop. That's Australia's longest running advanced property training, which we're holding in Melbourne in October 22nd to 24th. If you want to take advantage of the changes that are happening in the property market, and in particular, if you're interested in getting involved in property renovations or development, you've got to learn from real world people with real world advice, people who are doing it and actually have been doing it successfully for a long time. So click on the link below and find out more about our workshop. But back to the message I was telling you before. What it always seems to boil down to is that in their bid to get into the property markets, many investors are starting to speculate rather than invest. The problem is they're so determined to do something. They just want to do anything so they don't miss out. Even if they haven't got enough money or haven't developed the discipline to save, or they've already borrowed to the limit, their banks just won't lend them anymore. Now, of course, I understand why they're keen to share in the profits that others have achieved in property. But sometimes the right thing for an investor to do is nothing. I've made more money by things I've said no to than the things I've said yes to. That's because all my investments have been made as part of a planned strategy that involves property, finance and tax. But as many beginning investors are now making emotional decisions, that's why I'm calling it speculation. Okay, here are the three surefire ways to lose money in the current property markets. Number one, buying off the plan. Now, short sure sounds enticing. Buy today's prices, settle on in a few years time and you're gonna make a profit. Yes, it sounds good, but does it work? Currently, one of the big issues with buying off the plan is finance. And I'm not talking about developers having difficulty getting finance and therefore having to charge buyers above the market price to get their developments across the line. I'm talking about the finance an investor needs to eventually complete their purchase. Since most, loan, look, since most loan approvals are only current for three months or so, obtaining a formal pre-approval for an off-the-plan purchase is it's impossible. So the problem is we currently have six big banks, four big banks and two smaller banks in Australia, and they each have a policy restricting their exposure to not lending more than 15% in any one building. This means that if there are, say, 100 apartments in the building, and you're the 16th person to approach that bank, when the building is completed, they may, they may actually decline your loan approval. But when you start running to the next bank, they've already probably let, sold up their 16 loans too. The allocation's gone. So some investors who buy off the plan are going to have to sell because they can't get finance to settle. Now, when you add this to the fact that there's also been some off the plan purchasers who never intended to settle on completion, but always intended to on sell their property when the building was completed, you've got a whole lot of apartments up for sale when the building's finished. Now, is this a problem? Well, yes it is, because you're gonna have some desperate vendors who keep lowering their prices to take whatever the market offers. And even if you're one of those lucky ones who are able to settle, the banks are only going to lend you a percentage of the new lower valuation on your property, which will be the lowest sale price achieved by one of those desperate vendors rather than the price you contracted for. 
Now add to this the, bank, the fact that the banks only lend 70% of the loan to value ratio in the postcodes where many of these big developments are, and what looked like a good investment starts to turn sour. The second big problem is house and land packages. Now I know some investors buy house and land packages because they've heard that land appreciates in value and they feel they're getting a big block of land for their money. But when you think about it, usually the land only accounts for less than half of the selling price, giving these properties a very low land to value ratio. Now I know others are considering buying in these estates on the, on the new estates on the mistaken belief that properties are cheaper there. They think they're gonna be more affordable to the masses as property values keep rising. Now, of course, this is wrong because there are, these are exactly the type of areas that suffer the most when interest rate rises. Interest rates rise. You know, residents in these areas tend to have less disposable income than people who live in the more affluent suburbs. Now, while they may be great places to live and bring up your family, in general, new or outer suburbs are not good places to invest. Remember, one of the big factors that enhances capital growth is scarcity. And that's something missing in these suburbs. But even worse, I'm now hearing of a number of promoters who suggest trading new house and land packages. In other words, they suggest buying a house and land package now with the intention of on-selling them once construction has been completed. Boy, is this a recipe for disaster. Firstly, trading is not a way to become wealthy. Accumulating assets is. Secondly, there's no margin in house and land packages to allow for trading profits. Price sensitive purchases are always going to go just down the road to the next uh, builder. There's just no room for middlemen in this sort of product. And even if you could sell, and for a higher price than all the other speculators who are going to do exactly the same in the same estate as you, after stamp duty and tax, you're going to lose money. And don't be fooled to thinking that these areas are going to outperform over the next few years. In the outer suburbs, people's wages tend to go up by the CPI. However, in the inner, more affluent suburbs, residents have more disposable income, and that increases much, much faster than the CPI. They've got businesses, shares, other assets, bonuses, and so they're not going to be worried by rising interest rates. The third surefire way to lose money in property over the next few years is to follow some of those creative schemes currently being promoted by property spruikers. People with little or no money are being tempted by the prospect of bypassing the banks and getting it right into development without even developing the discipline for saving. They're happy to hear promoters' suggestions you can control millions of dollars worth of property using none of your own money. Now there's nothing new about these schemes and if history repeats itself the promoters of today will become very rich while their students will learn a very expensive lesson. Well, if these methods don't work, what does? There's one proven time-tested method that has made average Australians very wealthy. However, it's nowhere near as sexy as some of the smoke and mirror techniques I've just mentioned. So if you want to grow your own significant property portfolio, you need to own properties that will provide wealth-producing rates of return. This means buying a property below its intrinsic value in an area that outperforms the averages over the long term and one to which you can add value so you can create some capital growth. Now this could be through refurbishments, renovations, redevelopment. That's what most of those multi-millionaires in the, that Merrill Lynch Capgemini report did. You could also learn how to grow your wealth the same way as these sophisticated investors do and manufacture your capital growth through property renovations or property development. If you join me at my annual Real World Real Estate Workshop in October, you can also discover proven systems and strategies for profitable property investment that's going to allow you to take advantage of the window of opportunity between now and when our property markets eventually turn. Just to make things clear, this is an advanced property workshop that I conduct only once a year and it's Australia's longest running three-day property workshop where you're going to learn the art of property development and property renovations from some of the most respected experts in Australia. Now, Finally, if so much is happening in our property markets, I'm going to keep you updated every day or so with my blog. Just click on Michael's blog up top there and subscribe to it. Now, that's a different subscription to our newsletter. It gives you a really short daily market update. In the meantime, I look forward to sending you your next property update in two weeks' time.